Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2007. It was the launch platform for the 2007 caliber 8500 and the modern generation of purpose-built Omega coaxial calibers. It is is the DeVille Hour Vision, and it is spectacular. So, 41 millimeters in a combination of sapphire and stainless steel. The watch measures a reasonable 12.4 millimeters thick and 49.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This bracelet was created specifically for the Hour Vision, and it is a rarely seen accessory on a watch that was generally delivered with a strap. On my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, you can see it fits beautifully. This was the spirit of 2007, the height of the silly season for mortgage-backed securities and high finance. And I was working in downtown Manhattan back then, and I would stop at Penn Station's mini Tourneau every night as I headed back to Long Island on the Long Island Railroad and marvel at the hour vision, and I still do. It's a good fit. I wouldn't wear it on a wrist smaller than 14 centimeters circumference, but you can see I've got a little clearance on each side, and it's not terribly thick. It's relatively thin with a sloped bezel. It slides underneath the cuff. The watch, of course, equipped on a bracelet, is an even better match for the designer's intent as we have these Art Deco-like contrast and strakes running down the center of the primary links. You can see that there's a remarkable amount of play in the different articulations. So this bracelet feels remarkably silky. No one link is too large here. We have that interplay of polish and satination, and if you look carefully, there's even a rolled bevel along the side. The dial is Art Deco. The bracelet is Art Deco. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a taper here. There's also an unusual use of a curved spring bar on a bracelet so that the lugs can be drilled close to the case with no impediment to the motion of the bracelet. Removable links are fixed by screws and you will note the presence of two different link sizes so you can fine tune your fit. We have a double folding clasp and it is a sequential fold. One side closes before the other. There's a little gold Omega logo in there and it is a twin trigger release. So you press the triggers to open it up. Rolling around to the case, our vision with an emphasis on vision. Each side features sapphire allowing you to better appreciate that caliber 8500 on the inside. This was the very beginning of sapphire used as a case material on more affordable watches. The bezel is beautifully sloped, and as you can see, it's clenched at the four corners by the lugs, which ride all the way up to the edge of the sapphire, an unusual styling device. It's almost as though the dial and the movement are being clenched within the pincers of a diamond ring. So it's almost as if to suggest that the movement and the dial or like a set jewel on your wrist. Omega Crown push down, though the watch is 100 meters water resistant. There is some subtle satination on the flanks of the lugs, easy to miss as the lug shape fairly complex with at least four distinct facets, the side, the bevel, the tops, and then the downturned ends. Now the dial is upscale. We have rhodium plated strakes that run all the way around and they seemingly emerge from the crown. These are rhodium plated, but the logo as well as the indices and the hands are all white gold. So this was viewed as a flagship piece. So the frame for the date, the hands, the logo, and the indices are all solid 18 karat white gold. Look carefully and you can see there's a beautiful contrast at play between the facets of the indices as well as the facets of the hands. If you look very carefully, you could see almost like Grand Seiko, that's the name that comes to mind. The hands have a faceting on their end, satination across their top, and then a narrow but visible polished bevel on their edges. It's difficult to get the camera to focus on this, but it's definitely there. Let's see if I can get it to zoom in at all. You can also see that the second sand is entirely in high polish, but the satination across the top of the hands, the fastening of the ends, and the beveling on the side is not something you commonly see on Omega watches and you never see on Rolex watches. The dial base itself is a combination of matte black with white and red printing, and it is as spectacular today as it was back then. Now, of course, the watch features a stop seconds function, so you can stop everything and synchronize to a reference time, but caliber 8500 also has a time zone feature. You drive the date forward 
or backwards and allows you to change your time zone as you travel without moving the minute hand or stopping the seconds hand so the watch continues to keep good time. The original launch of caliber 8500 was a breakthrough whereas previous Omega coaxial calibers had been adaptations of existing ETA and value movements. This was built from the base plate up using George Daniels tri-level coaxial technology, so it is as accurate as you would expect. It is relatively maintenance-free. You can go five to ten years between services. It gives you a 60-hour power reserve via twin mainspring barrels in series. So not only do you get a longish 60-hour power reserve, but there's a nice even torque release by the two barrels in series. So you don't get the big amplitude drop-off that typically comes on a single barrel movement after 24 hours. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It beats weight a quirky 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate, and then it has a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance for shock resistance. It is a bi-directional winder for smooth action, and all of this pivoting on 39 joules. It has that coaxial escapement, which if you look carefully, you can actually see underneath a bridge that sits underneath the balance bridge, there's that secondary bridge for the escapement, and you can see the coax in action reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of the Omega DeVille Hour Vision.